local radio for the Merrimack Valley, 980 WCAP. Everybody gets it. Good morning, listeners, and welcome back to the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show with Ron Coleman of both RCS Technology Solutions and RCS Online Solutions, where we help business owners attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients to achieve even greater success. The purpose of this show is to help business owners and entrepreneurs cut the learning curve and achieve even greater success by learning from our subject matter experts that we bring on in the first two episodes to help you cut that learning curve down. So these people are experts. They've already had success in their given fields, and what they've done to be to become successful, if you mirror that, learn that, or take what you can from it and then incorporate what you can, it might help your learning curve go from three months, six months, three years, six years, to maybe 18 months. So having a coach and mentor is huge and getting some advice from people who have already priceless. And in this case, it is priceless because it's totally free. So uh, our second guest today is Chloe Manfield. Manville, and she is the owner and founder of Inspired Outcome, a productivity organizing business in Massachusetts. She started her business because of her passionate her passion for transferring knowledge around productivity and organizing to anyone seeking strategies to better manage their time, energy, and belongings. Her education in psychology and social work provides her with a pragmatic understanding of human of basic human behavior and motivation, allowing her to effectively work directly with clients that help them overcome personal challenges. Chloe, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Excellent. But first, is it Cloney or Chloe? It's actually Cleone. (laughs) Cleone, okay. Yeah, Cleone. I'm sorry. Sorry, I owe you an apology. It's Cleone. It's not an easy name. (laughs) Yeah, well, no, it probably is. It's just, you know, I don't want to, I, I went to school in Boston. I don't know if I should say that publicly, but, you know, <laughs> so we, we often spell things out, at least way back when I went. Maybe it's better now. So we, we do things phonetically, or at least that's how we were taught at that time. So, but uh, thank you so much for, for taking the time to bless our listeners with your uh, skill set. Uh, where are you calling in from today? I am in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Wow, that's pretty far down there. Um, and I'm up. We're up here. This radio station is in low mass, but like I, when I mentioned to you, we have a reach 1.5 million. That's all over the place. So uh, there's a lot of people going to benefit from uh, what you have to say. Uh, I met you recently at a networking event in the Boston area, and you were doing an exercise that. I totally, I thoroughly loved, it. and because it it is so profound, and it's, I don't want to say it's so easy, but if people take the time to do it, the the effect will significantly help them in their business. So you're, you're free to talk about anything you want, but could we at least start with um, that? And also, if I missed anything in your bio, please tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you do, and then maybe we can go back and talk about that exercise a bit. Absolutely. Um, first, I want to say thank you so much for um, approaching me after that workshop. Um, this has been an incredible, incredible journey for me in that in 2013, when the government shut down, um, that gave me an opportunity to uh, take a break because I worked for the government. At that time, it was um, my 12th year with the federal government, and I was completely overwhelmed and burnt out. And so when the government shut down, I had about three weeks to really um, reflect on where I was in my life and in my career and why was it that I was feeling burnt out and disconnected from where I thought I would be at that time. And what it boiled down to was um, my organization skills in, in time management and just kind of not spending time to reflect on what I wanted. I was just so busy taking care of my family, working, um, doing chores and errands that I had lost um, what made me feel whole at that time. So I I used 
that um, break to, to reflect, come up with a plan of action to really reclaim myself so that I could be fully present in my my life as a as a mother, as a daughter, as a wife, as as uh, in the various roles. And from that journey came this strategy that I thought would be helpful for others. And the more I talked to people and the more I shared my journey and the more I shared these strategies, I kept getting these positive feedback um, and just being motivated and inspired to take the next step. And you're a perfect example of that. That was um, probably my fourth workshop uh, that I delivered and shortly after that, you approached me and, and shared how um, you felt the, the exercise was very useful. And so my, my business is about around productivity and um, time management and organizing, not just organizing um, physical space, but also organizing one's calendar and schedule so that your time reflects what's really meaningful and important to the individual. And so the exercise that I did um, last Friday when we met was to really get people to get in touch with what is important and inspiring. Because for myself, I actually lost sight of that and, and no longer knew what was fulfilling for me as an individual. I only kind of knew at the time how to, you know, take care of my family and, and their needs. So that's that's where we intercepted for me, you know, for me delivering that message and, sh and sharing my story. Yeah, and, and I think what really caught my attention about it was um, that there is a huge difference between being busy and being productive. People in their business can be busy all the time, right? They're busy doing this and they're busy doing that, but it, it doesn't mean that they're productive. And what I liked about your exercise was it broke down a way to be productive. And you, you may still be busy, but you're going to be more focused and things are going to, you're going to be more clear and you'll be able to prioritize. Uh, I have a lot of clients in one of the things I uh, deal with frequently is that they're so busy and, and, you know, we tell clients, whatever, you know, you have to learn it, do it, delegate it. So focus on the one, two or three things that is your top money producing activities, your IP, your, you know, intellectual property, what it is that you really bring value to the marketplace is and anything else you need to delegate that out because if you're doing that and it's a, something you can pay somebody 15, 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour, you know, your, your skill set could be better used. So there's a big difference between, between being busy and being productive. You're absolutely right. And, and I think, especially for mothers, what happens is keeping yourself busy becomes um, like a defense mechanism because you almost fear, and you, you almost fear once you get to that quiet place you're going to be afraid of what you see, and then you're going to be forced to hold yourself accountable for where things are. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm busier than I was back in 2013. I am, I'm fully engaged at work, fully engaged at, at home. I'm volunteering here and there, but it's the happiest that I've been because everything that I do is very focused and aligns with my goals and my values, and that's what I've been trying to kind of promote in, in, in others. You know, every step that I take is moving me closer to where I ultimately want to go and not into this um, limbo, busy period of time where you're just not making movement. You're, you're ending your day completely exhausted. You have no idea what, 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 what you've accomplished, and you're going to sleep just to do it all over again. I love it. <laughs> Now let's say um, let's try some. Let's say somebody is they don't have a business yet, uh, and they're thinking about starting a business. They have everything lined up, and they're kicking off the first of next month. Then we have somebody who's been in business for eighteen to maybe twenty-four, thirty months, and they they're kind of successful. They they're making six figures. They got you know, a couple of consistent clients and things are going good. And then we have somebody who's been in business for like five years and, and they're really doing well, but they know that they're doing a fraction of what they could be doing. So what are some of the tips on each level? Uh, what are some of the tips that people could start to do to 
you know, use their time better to be more productive and thus more successful in business and in life. Because, you know, if, if, if you're swamped and so stressed out because of work and you're doing, you know, nine different things and you're not being as productive, one, it, it seriously increases your stress level. You're probably not eating and sleeping right. You're not making as much money as possible. But beyond all that, you're certainly not spending as much time with the people you love. And that's kind of like why most people go into business is, is to, you know, have free time, you know. So what are some tips you might give some people in those scenarios? So the first thing that I would re- recommend, and the tips are actually um, would be the same for, for all of those different levels of um, success. It's really about um, gaining clarity on where you want to be, whether it be in the beginning of your business, moving into this next level, fine-tuning where you are, but spending that time to gain clarity around where you want to be and in all the different areas of your life that is important to you. And so I promote journaling, and journaling um, can be done in, in different ways. And for me, I actually utilize all the different methods. And wherever I'm feeling dissatisfaction or whatever role that I'm playing that I'm not playing to the full full potential, then I spend some time reflecting on that. Um, I use whether it be vision board or um, writing out a narrative or bullet points, but spending that time really getting in touch and and pulling apart the why is it that you're not happy why is it that um you're feeling the urge to move to the to the next level so that's what i would recommend for each of uh, those people at the that um, various stages once you've gained clarity around that uh, the next step is to figure out um, what things that you can do to start fill in the gap between where you are and where you want to go. And for me, the best strategy was not to create a whole new system that deviated from how I I currently operated my life. That, to me, was way too overwhelming because I was already very busy. So when I work with clients, it's really about streamlining and just tweaking your pre-existing habits and behaviors and just tweaking it just so slightly so that you can make that change and doing it in in, in 21-day increments. Once you've got that slight change um, well incorporated into your routine, change it a little bit or add, add something new. So you gain the clarity, you come up with the action steps that that you need to move you forward while aligning them to your current behaviors. And then the next step would be to build that that, that confidence and and challenge the the negative self-talk that you may be having and not necessarily doing it in a way where you're um, overly critical of yourself and and, um, belittling yourself, but in a very kind way and using that self-doubt and negative talk as a blueprint to what you need to um, address next. And so, example, um, for me, public speaking was a challenge. I, I'm an introvert. I enjoy working in the background and playing a supportive role. But the, the, the message that I had and the tools that I, I wanted to share, I could not get my message out there continuing to work behind the scenes. And so my negative self-talk was, you know, That's too scary. You're an introvert. Introverts just don't do that. They're not public speakers. And so my task for myself was to address, develop my confidence around public speaking and what would that entail. And for me, it was to join Toastmasters. So those are the kind of of steps that I would would suggest. The final strategy that I I talk about and – appreciated so much for myself to see it in this way is that as you make those changes, you're going to fail and and miss some milestones that you've created for yourself. And so that strategy I found um, to, to, to realize that failure has function. And with that um, view, I became more empowered and almost because of it, I'm more likely to throw myself out there and take on opportunities that I don't think that I'm ready for. And so I'm more likely now to say, yes, let's get the failure so I can learn my lessons, you know, kind of thing. So 
those are the strategies that I've used and I continue to use and I would recommend um, to folks. I love it. So you kind of like outline what it is you want to accomplish, figure yeah. out what it is that's holding you back, if anything, and then figuring out how you can counter those things that are holding you back or overcome them, whether it's learning uh, some skills or joining a group or whatever the case may be. Exactly right. And then go out there. When you fail, evaluate so that you can you, you can continue to grow. Because for me, I, I always took the safe route, and I didn't realize that about myself. I was very successful. I am very successful in my life, but I was successful doing things that I knew I would succeed at. And so in this um, next journey, I'm about, you know, pushing myself, going out there and just seeing what happens and embracing um, the fear factor that comes with it and the missteps that I'm sure to have. Nice. And it's uh, sort of like what I was just talking a little bit with my past guest. You know, the way we view things that didn't work out, if we view them as failures opposed to learning lessons or, okay, I found a way that this isn't, it doesn't work this way or it's not as efficient or effective when we do things this way. Uh, to me, it's a matter of perspective. So if you can tune your mind to seeing things as a learning opportunity instead of a failure and also separate yourself, because if, if you're doing something in business and it doesn't work out, that business idea or that business entity failed, didn't work out. It doesn't mean you as an individual, as a human being, are a failure. It's just that that idea, it wasn't the right time or place or, you know, the assets weren't, weren't lined up correctly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's very liberating. I find it to be very liberating. And for me, it's just more exciting, you know. It, it's an adrenaline rush. You go through it and you come out better on the other side. And it builds such confidence. It's you know, confidence can be disguised in so many different ways. And, you know, example, I'm too tired, um, it's too late, I, I'm not smart enough. And it's all, it's all about self-confidence. And if you override those self-doubts um, more frequently and you build up your almost your tolerance for risk, I find it to just be very energizing um, experience versus living into the living in that safe mode all the time. Yeah, and that's excuse me, that's actually the definition of an entrepreneur. If you look it up in the dictionary, <laughs> is somebody who's uh, able to withstand risk. You know, I, I chuckle a little bit because you know, growing up, my goal was to get the right job you know, acquire the right education and all that stuff. And so to be on the other side and be looking to, to you know, I, I'm owning my own business now, it's such a, a big difference from, from where I started or thought I would be. So I really appreciate you you seeing that light and, and inviting me to, to share my story. This is just a, an amazing journey. And, it, it you know, I just started and, you know, it's very exciting. Yeah, well, I mean, thank you. I mean, it, it's a testament. Uh, I was just at the place at the right time. You're the one who put the uh, the package together. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about how that package is? We have another, like, eight minutes. Um, so, like, the steps. There was four or five different steps. So maybe we can kind of give people a visualize. I know you had you, you spoke about it. You gave the visual. You gave the handouts, which, you know, some people are auditory, some people are visual, some people are hands-on. And then you broke us up into groups and had us each talk and work together. So we might not be able to recreate all of uh, all of that that you put together, but maybe just the verbal part if, or, or in you know in brief. Sure. So you know my my business model and the services I pro provide actually falls in line with that small that short exercise that I share. So you know the first step is is about gaining clarity. There's several activities that you can do to do that. For me, my business revolves around you know helping my clients to get gain clarity through um, journaling exercises, whether it be a vision board that um, I offer for a two-hour session where you use um, 
imageries from whether it be a magazine or the computer to, to visually represent the outcome of the goal that you're looking for. So what I've learned through my own journal, my own journey and through reading and research is that it's just not enough to have that goal and go after it. You really want to spend that time to get emotionally connected to it so that if you're too tired or you have that self-doubt, the feeling um, that you associate with achieving that goal will be the thing that gets you through those, 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 those times. So, example, if you're looking to lose five pounds or maybe, let's say, 30 pounds, you know, just the idea of watching the pounds melt off of the, of the scale won't be enough to always bypass the cookie or whatever. But if you think about what it means to lose that 30 pounds, it means to feel confident. It means to feel sexy. It means to, to, to go after other um, goals. That, that is more likely to keep you focused when times get rough. The second step is to um, incorporate small steps into your daily routine. Um, there are things that um, people do automatically, right? Brush your teeth, comb your hair, get dressed. For all the habits that you do without thinking of, and they're automatic for you, I walk my clients through, you know, breaking down the goal and what are the steps that you need to get there. and and then tagging those new activities or those new steps to something that is already um, well-established in your life. This allows folks to make small incremental changes less painful and then um, build that confidence that you will need to keep on going. Um, the next, the final one would be the evaluation. You know, give yourself some time to include those steps. If there are things that you haven't fulfilled for yourself, ask yourself why. Why did I reach for the cookie instead of um, the apple? Was it the time of day? You know, at 2 o'clock your, your, your willpower is, is lower. Is it that you didn't drink enough water? You know, really spending that time on the front end, gaining clarity around around your goal, and and spending time again at the back end, for trying to figure out um, how you could have created a more um, positive environment that is more likely to guarantee success. And so sometimes it's just a, it's a lonely journey for people to go from you know from clarity to evaluation. And so I run a mastermind group with four to Six, um, people who have the similar goals, and we, we work with each other to get there. If working one-on-one -on -one is more desirable and you're looking to declutter whether your physical space or your schedule or an office so that your environment is conducive for you to spend time to gain, gain clarity around what you're looking for, then, then I offer that as well. And then I do workshops um, around the different elements of gaining clarity around goals, vision board workshop um, and uh, goal setting and achievement. Yeah, I think having goals is so important, but you have to take action, and the action has to be effective and efficient. Absolutely. And one of the great ways of accomplishing that is, you know, sitting down with someone like yourself and just going through the process and the steps. And, you know, I recommend doing it at the very beginning so you're not spinning your wheels. Exactly right. Yep. And I just want to let all the listeners know that all the great information you've heard uh, is archived. So if you were unable to write anything down, this episode, as all episodes in a couple of days from now, this episode will be loaded on my website, rcstechnologysolutions.com, as well as the uh, radio station's website, uh, 980wcap.com. And... Um, Cleone will actually uh, get a clip, and uh, I'm sure she'll be able to share it as well. So if you were unable to write down the contact information previously or what uh, Cleone is going to give you now, um, feel free to just tune in, and you'll be able to get it again. So could you please give us all your contact information? Yeah. So I can be reached at um, by email, inspiredoutcome.com, I-N-S-P-I-R-E-D, outcome, O-U-T-C-O-M, at outlook.com. And you can also um, find me on LinkedIn under my name, Cleone Mainville, as well as on Facebook. 
Excellent. Now, do you have a website as well? I'm working on that. It should be up within a couple of weeks. Okay. And um, if it's not, talk to me. <laughs> we have a whole team. We can get it done in a week if you have your content. But because uh, right. it's very important that your website, uh, unrelated to you as an individual, but everybody, their website should be their focal point. So all your blog, everything should be on your website. It can be elsewhere too, but you want to have your brand. You want to brand yourself. So it's super important. But I want to thank you very much for uh, blessing our listeners. And uh, is there anything you'd like to say in like less than a minute, 30, 40 seconds? I want to tell you again, thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate spending this time with you. Oh, excellent. And thank you so much for delivering quality content to our listeners. I mean, this is really about uh, the benefits and value that you're delivering. I just stumbled upon it. It, it, it is it's really about you. So thank you so much. And uh, everyone, you, you've you been listening to Ron Cooming and the Internet Marketing and WCAP, Lowell, Haverhill, Lawrence, Methuen, Nashua, and Salem, New Hampshire, serving the Merrimack Valley.